The Macabre World Podcast is brought to you by Darker Art Studio, home of real human bone jewelry. Stock and custom pieces are available, so visit us on the web at www.darkerartstudio.com and show them your darker art side. Macabre World, a podcast from Darker Art Studio, where we explore the dark, strange, and unusual from this world and beyond. Hello and welcome to the Macabre World Podcast. I'm your host, Rocky Degatti, and with me today is Mary Jo Chudley from Penn Paranormal. Welcome, Mary Jo. Hi, how are you? Oh, it's wonderful to see you again, Mary Jo, and I met at the Pennhurst Paranormal Con uh, last year in Spring City, PA. We're going to hopefully see each other again this year, and that's going to be on May 18th and 19th in Spring City at the Pennhurst Asylum. Also with me today in studio, as always, is my darker arts cohort, Jasmine Bigla. Hello, hello. So uh, so ladies having a little clatch tonight, and you know, it was a pleasure to meet a lot of people at, at the convention. You always stuck out in my mind because of uh, your passion for the for the subject is is very apparent. And you've got you're a woman of many talents. But first things first, just curious, how did you get into paranormal investigation? When I first bought my first house, it was haunted pretty bad. And it was like in 98. So back then there was no shows. There's no nothing. Nobody talked about it. So I kind of had to fix it myself. And our whole area was haunted, not just my house. It was the whole area was affected because it was a um, satanic area, which we didn't know that at the time. But we found out going through the police and files that, yeah, there was a land or right behind my house. There was a big open field and that's where they were doing it. So that's why our whole area was getting affected. Now, just just in general, so that we don't have people knocking on anybody's door. Uh, we're talking about like the northeast type states, or are we in the sort of like the northeast area that 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 happened? Yeah, it was actually like in um, a Bucks County area. Bucks yeah, County, in PA. Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. The reason yes. I ask is because of the histo- history of the area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's. I mean, I, I live in a historical house. You live in a historic mm-hmm. house, um, and, and it's and and these houses in you know, I'll call them the original 13s as well as beyond do have a lot of history. So what yeah, this area think? was an historical area. It was like around the historical part of, you know, sure. it was literally, literally like a, a street down. It was all the historical houses. It's it's beautiful there. I have, I have driven through. So what were you experiencing and what did you do about it? Well, my when we moved into our house, um, I had a four year old son and I had a nine month old my mom, nine month old daughter, and my son started talking to an imaginary friend, and you know that's normal. I mean, we moved out of my my parents' house. You know, we were saving up money for a house, and we did. And when we moved out, that's when my son started like talking to this thing. I just thought it was normal and just let it be. And then one day he said, you know, mommy, and he would call him Marky. And my friend has a son named Marky. So that's why I kind of put like, you know, he's just, he's just stressed. You know, he was mommy, Marky's going to the bathroom. I said, okay, just tell him to flush the toilet. Make sure he flushes the toilet. All of a sudden the toilet flushes. And we're, me and my husband look at each other like, um, what's going on? Well, my son was standing right next to me. So we, he wasn't in the bathroom. I'm like, that's when all the stuff started to happen. And then I called and I'm like, really, I was re- really religious. So I was calling my mom. I'm like, mom, what do I do? And she goes, don't worry. And she started bringing church music over. Well, when we start bringing the church music, that's when it started getting worse. And it really hit hard is when my son got lifted up. And I've been doing this for a very long time. It's the only time I've ever seen somebody get lifted up and thrown. And of course it was my own kid. And that had to well, be terrifying. It, it was, I get the chills every time I think about it. Sure. And his head was about a couple inches away from a mirror um, uh, closet door. So if he would have hit that closet, he would have been dead. And I remember two seconds later is when my pastor called me and I'm hysterical. I can't talk. I didn't even get up. I couldn't move. Like I was so like, oh my God, what just happened? He didn't move. He just stood there like, like, like frozen. So I called the pastor. Well, he called me and I said, Shane literally just got, up and th- got thrown. And he goes, I'll be right there. And he did bless every part of the house. He was telling me to say all this stuff and do all this stuff. Um, and that night, 
when my husband came home from work, he, we heard this God awful scream outside of our house. It never came back into our house, but it was surrounded by the outside. So if I went into my one shed in the backyard, I would get hit every single time I go back there. Then I come to find out that 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 shed was a part of the chicken coop that was a part of that whole land before they built the houses. And I didn't want to take it down because I didn't want this thing move in. Mm -hmm. But it was. I had a friend who lived down the street who said that she saw the same little entity and her kid said it was name was Marky. So, yeah, it's just it, it, it wasn't alive. It wasn't human. And. My son right now is 28 years old and he will not talk about it. He does not like the paranormal. He's scared to death. I mean, he, he, he remembers it. Um, He's scared. He's scared to death of it. Absolutely scared to death of the paranormal. So. Wow. Yeah. So that's why we kind of just kind of help the people in the neighborhood because we couldn't get rid of this thing. It just stayed in that whole area, you know? And that inspired you to like get involved and, and try to learn more and to help other people. Right. Because nobody else knew how to do it. And there, cause I said, there's no ghost hunters on TV. And the only thing I used to watch was Sylvia Brown. I, everybody laughs at me when I tell oh, them this. Oh no, no. Sil- I loved her. Remember? Her? Yeah. She's, she's, she was always on, was it Montel? Montel Williams. Yeah. Yes. Everybody knew it. And I would you know, watch You know what her. I remember about her? I remember her trying to explain how having psychic ability doesn't give the actual individual and advantage she used to say things like you know you lose your purse i can tell you where it is i lose my purse it's gone exactly i remember mm-hmm. her saying stuff like that yeah i i think i think there's something to be said i mean there's there's something to be said for the trail of blazing that has happened with a lot of these paranormal shows starting with ghost hunters for folks that uh I, I, most of my listeners know but um I, i'm originally from rhode island and way back in the day before there was ghost hunters There was the Atlanta Paranormal Society that met at a uh, Starbucks in West Warwick. And that is when I met Jay Grant and and Carl Johnson and and a lot of the folks that are involved that later became more well-known via TAPS. And um, they've always been awesome folks to know. And and Steve Gonsalves, God, I I keep forgetting. Poor Steve. Steve. Poor Steve. And... um, so, you know, and and it was it was a budding time for that. And when it all broke out and and they, you know, they had the show and then things got and lots of folks are involved now. And I think I think it's really changed the culture. Mm-hmm. And and I think that it's uh, it's a, something um, and, and this is I don't know that I'm creating a hot button issue or anything. One of the things I did notice is that when I look at most of the shows now, there's some women. But women in leadership roles, not as an accessory role, is um, not as common. Mm-hmm. How do you uh, yeah. how do you think that's that's that you think that's something that's going to change? Or you, I know you're trying to change it, but you know, I mean, what what else? So we, what 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 do women in the paranormal need to do to kind of front run? You think? I don't know, but I, I I've noticed that. Um, and I'm not saying anything about men or women or nothing like that, but I find it when I go to cases, I'm a little bit more understanding and more, Hey, listen, I sit there and listen to more men. I'm just like, let's get the equipment. I mean, that's what I've seen. I'm like, I try to really help them. Like I'll be up all night talking to them on the phone just to calm them down sure. when I think men are a little different, but that's just me. That's what I've seen in the people in my, you know, area, just me and my husband are at Penn. So, um, but yeah, I just try so hard. I, th- I think it's a little different again between the men and women, but my followers are mostly women. So that's to me is strange that there's all these women watching. Why isn't there more women on TV? And why you aren't know? there more women investigating? Mm-hmm. Exactly. But there is like when we do groups and we do events, there is a there. I think there's more women. I see women all the time. And that's why I'm like, why are they not? They're not are represented. They busy? Yeah. Or they're, they're busy because they have kids and this and that. Like, yeah. I really I mean, I've always done this. But when my kids moved out is when I went hardcore because they weren't in my house. I didn't have to worry about them. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know they're they're not here. So, you know what I mean? Like, if I can bring something into the house that I know is haunted, I know it's not going to attack them. And I think that was my, I think that's probably why a lot of women don't do as much as they do. You know, when they start their family, they kind of settle down because they don't want nothing following them home or sure. stuff like that. But I mean, it's it's never been my experience that 
the gentlemen who are leading these groups, all of them, no one in particular, but all of the gentlemen I've met have been very receptive and and have, I've had nothing but good experiences. I'm not saying that the right. that the participants are biased gender wise, but it does seem that the media is. Yeah, the men get more attention. The men get more attention on TV. Yeah. But when, you know, in the groups I've been in with with men, the men are very egalitarian yeah. and they're and they're all very fair. So I'm just curious why that bias, you know, and, and I always think like, do we need we need to get more folks like yourself in, in more in more media of a media presence, because there are some tremendous women that we've all met. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 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 some of them like you know like the like you know like Chris like Christina like Karen like a lot of these really cool girls who have got some great great contributions and they do amazing research and I think that it needs to be a little more um, represented and recognized. Yeah, I mean a lot of people like I was um, asked to go to different like locations and when they found out that I was the owner of Pen Paranormal. And I was, it's just basically me. I do it all. My husband helps though. Don't get me wrong. He does. But they, and they were all men. They were like, oh, you own Pen Paranormal? Like they were shocked. And I'm like, yeah, like, why, why are you shocked? Like I, I do this, you mm -hmm. know, but they were really shocked that I was a girl. Like they didn't realize, I mean, they see my pictures in there, right. but they didn't realize that I did everything. I did. I reach out to people. I'm the one that goes to their house. Bill does too, but it's the majority is me. You know, and if I need help, I know people that I can bring with me, you know, just in case. And we need more than just two people. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are shocked that I was the sole person of Penn. And yeah, a lot. And that shouldn't be that way. But I mean, even I think it's the, the media bias that they're, they're, mm -hmm. they're I mean, they, they can't help but be shocked because they've been conditioned by what they see. Mm -hmm. It's not right. Way, you know, exactly. So, to speak. so, you know, there's there's a lot of. uh you know, different, but a lot of people hit the same places. I think everybody likes to get their own research, even though it may, a place may be uh, common and, and all of that sort of stuff. And one of the things that uh, we've talked about briefly uh, is you made a very recent visit to a place very near and dear to me, which is uh, Lizzie Borden's home in Fall River, Massachusetts for my, my, my listeners know, but for you tuning in for the first time, I am originally from New England, from a little town called Bristol, Rhode Island, which is as the crow flies about seven miles from Fall River and my mom's family, when they came here, uh, that's where they landed. So I'm very familiar with, with Fall River. That's my home zone. And uh, so tell me, tell me, had you been to the Lizzie Borden house before? Was that your first visit? No, it was my second, but I want to say this. So where I lived in my haunted house, it was Bristol, Pennsylvania. That's oh my goodness. You said Bristol. Yeah, I know Bristol. Yeah, yeah that's, cool, that's where that it was. Cool cemetery downtown with that weird chair in it. The witch's chair. And I've done yeah. many lives there. And where we had, when we were on a live, people start, the police and even ambulance will come to say hi to us. I'm like, yeah, we'll leave. Like, no, you're good. It was, it was funny, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of weird. <laughs> That but, is um, fun. I, I've had that happen to me uh, in uh, in Exeter, Rhode Island, at Mercy Brown's grave. So I, I feel you oh, on geez. that. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. I spent yeah, actually all night in that cemetery once with Taps. It was a blast. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. And shout out to Carl Johnson and his nervous disposition. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he knows he knows I adore him. I've known that man forever. They're wonderful, wonderful people. So. Tell me about how how your Lizzie experiences. Tell me about let's talk Lizzie. So the first Lizzie board, I, I I went there five years ago on my birthday. That was my birthday present to myself because I always wanted to go there. We didn't get a lot. We had the murdered room. We didn't get a lot because the other people that were there were younger and they were all drunk, which wasn't nobody's fault. You know, it just happened. So we just kind of sat around just watch her and make sure they didn't get hurt. That that was my thing is the mother came out of me. I'm like, mm -hmm. you got the 20 year olds playing with Ouija words. And I'm just sitting there like, if anything happened, I was the mother of the house. I so we it. didn't get anything that night because that happened. Um, this time around, we went with all of our friends because um, the right after that, it was a two day event at the Conjuring house. So we kind of, before we did our big event, we went to Lizzie Borden. Um, I, only thing I really got, and people that go to Lizzie Borden, they know Max is the black cat. Um, when Brian Cano, when he knew I was there the first time, he goes, take a picture of Max. He's at the black cat. So I spent most of the whole day looking for this black cat. As we we're about to leave, I found him. And the girl who was working there told me, oh, he don't like people. He like, well, he liked me. He let me pick him up. I have all these pictures and videos of him. 
So I, when he died, that kind of bothered me because I'm an animal lover. Sure. So we were sitting there a couple of weeks ago and I felt something needed on my leg. Like a cat was needing on me. And I'm just sitting there like, and when I get touched, anything, I don't say nothing. I will be completely quiet because I just don't like attention drawn to me. So I'm just like, okay, something's neat. And I'm looking and I can see my leg going down, but there's nothing there. I'm like, okay, what is this? So I'm just sitting there like, okay, it's something like a child. But I knew it was a cat because how it was needed like right. this. It was making biscuits. Say, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So then, then the tour guide starts talking about Max. I'm like, oh my God. And then she goes, yeah, he's here. He's here. And then she shows the, um, she has a heat sensor and she showed the outline and, she, and I'm sitting there going, how weird is that? I'm feeling this. And then two seconds later, she brings up Max. And I'm like, oh my and I'm thinking oh my and then I start crying because I'm like oh my god and I'm like what's the matter I'm like nothing 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 because I didn't want to say anything so that really hit home because I think that cat knew I adored him and you know I that I just you know what I mean like oh they know when you like him yeah yeah and it was just like he wanted to let him know because he knew she was going to talk about him and he did that so he knew I knew it was him um but we got, we did get that. But the most best evidence with Lizzie Borden was at Maplecroft. I oh, actually that's got an, an EV- amazing house on French Street. Sure. Yes, I got an EVP of her saying something as I'm walking down the steps. It said "move," and then another woman's voice said "watch out." So we heard it with our ears and got it on video. And I'm like, and there was nobody down. There was nobody there. And historically. For for folks who don't know, the two women that occupied the house was Lizzie Borden and her sister Emma, and also Nance O'Neill at one point, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and they and even when I first saw that house when we first went to Lizzie Borden and we did you know just drive over to Maplecroft, I said to my husband, "Lizzie's not in that house. She's here. She's definitely in this house." Like I just felt that she was there, um, and I was right because like it was just a weird because it sounded like I don't know. I just knew it was her voice. You just know. You just know. Like I had sure. this weird feeling. I knew that was her, you know. Um, and, and that's an interesting. It's a beautiful home, and it's a, a, a an historic neighborhood. What's interesting is is that for folks who aren't familiar with the area, it is literally a sneeze away from a very large hospital. It is right around the corner from Trout Memorial Hospital, and um, it's so it's a hustle bustle kind of area because there's ambulances in and out. You know, it, it's the, it's a hospital neighborhood. But this, this, the the uh, fact that it was sold recently, I believe, or I don't know if it's back on mm-hmm. the market, but I do know it was sold and it was running, I think, between six and seven hundred thousand dollars. And the the home itself is absolutely um, stunning. Oh, it's beautiful because we went to Conjuring that night and the next night we went to Maplecroft and within a, what, a one, one and a half weeks, um, Conjuring got sold and then Maple got uh sold a week after we were in it i'm like how weird is that that is so, strange. Ma- so you're good so luck Maple- yeah <laughs> I, I, I was if i was good luck i would own both of them you know I mean? right <laughs> yeah i feel I, you there <laughs> believe me i i actually talked to Corey. i would have loved to bought the conjuring house i would believe me if we right. just didn't buy this house we would have we would have tried because I really I, wanted to open that up for the paranormal. I grew up with both stories. Um, I grew up hearing, of course, you know, everybody talks about the children's rhyme, Lindy Morton taking, you know, and all of that. But I mean, it was part of my local history. It was, it was a play, you know, a house we we drove by all the time. It was there was a lot going on in that area, and and people knew the history. You know, I have family actually buried in Oak Grove Cemetery. And so, you know, it, it was a big part of the fabric of the not only the, the the area and the culture, but, you know, who we are. And um, and later, as I was I was a kid in the 70s is, um, you know, the the Perron family, they I don't know how else to say it. they dragged those poor people out like every Halloween to tell their story on the on the local news before it became a thing, which is probably how eventually it, it reached the ears and eyes of Hollywood. But um, th- were the Johnson brothers involved at the, at your Conjuring House experience? Um, I've actually had Carl Johnson. When when Corey and Jen bought the house, I think it was in June. I went in August because the caretaker was scared to be in there. And he I was texting him like on like Facebook and he was like, come up. I'm like, come up. He was, yeah, I'm by myself. I don't want to be here. So I brought friends with me and we went up there. He didn't even sleep upstairs. I slept upstairs, but let me tell you that place 
I mean, I guess it's hit or miss or who you are there. But let me tell you, every time I go there, we have experiences like you would not believe. Really? It's insane. Like what? Tell but, me what happens. The You ever see, I don't know if you ever saw the evidence where the ball gets flown off the radiator. Mm-hmm. Have you seen? That's my clip. I was Fantastic. there. I was sleep. I was sleeping in the bed next to it, like, you know, in the middle room. And I, I'm not scared of a lot of things. I'm not. But let me tell you, that night I had my shoes on. I had... I knew something was in that room staring at me and did not want me in there. And that night, that's when the ball got thrown. I felt like the whole house shook, but it was a actually a softball. Um, and then if anybody's ever watched Poltergeist, the light in the kitchen was when he was talking about the Warrens, it went, bzzz, and I had this all on video because I video hip everything. <laughs> so you hear, bzzz, and you can smell the, br- I'm like, what is going on? And the girl that I brought with me wanted to be gone. She didn't want to stay there. She wow. was, she was, she was drinking holy water. She had a gallon drinking of holy, holy water. Drinking it. I, I thought, you know what? I never even thought of that. But yeah, she was drinking it. She was scared to death. And I'm like, what and the stuff that we were, holy water. I don't know. You think you would get some? I don't know. I don't know. But she was drinking it because I saw a whole gallon. And as we were pulling up, she's drinking. I'm like, what are you drinking? Oh, just water. And I found out when we went home because we were supposed to stay there for a couple of days. It was a seven hour drive. And she wanted to go home the next day. She didn't want to stay there. She was scared to death. But yeah, so the first time when after um, Ghost Adventures was there, because we had we couldn't post anything. We could post outside, but we couldn't post any of our evidence until Halloween night. And once okay. Ghost Adventures aired, then I could post all my stuff. And literally that night on Halloween is when I post all my stuff about The Conjuring. Um, but we went back, I think, in January, and that's when Carl Johnson came with us. And let me tell you, that house knew him. And I got Very well. hit. Yes, I got hit in the garage. The, the the barn, I think, is one of the most, I think it's the battery of that whole area. Because something hit me so hard when I was on a live, left a huge bruise on my leg. Oh, no. Right in the middle of a live. That's and wild. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. And one time, we, mm. me and my husband just went up there and- I was sitting in the barn. Don't laugh at me, but I fell asleep because I was sick. Oh, no, I've been doing that lately. I get it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I had I was in a hospital two weeks prior, had four units of blood. So my my husband takes me to the conjuring house. Dumb me didn't think. Yeah, because dumb me didn't think, you know, that's not a good idea. And I'm sitting in a barn, fall asleep because I'm tired. And um, I hear Crumpus, literally an 800 pound thing on top of the, the barn. I call my husband up and say, get out here. Where are you? I'm in the bathroom. I'm like, get out here now. So he cut and I have it videoed him running in. I'm like, what is that? He was like, a chicken. I said, a chicken? An 800 pound chicken? Like I'm, I'm cursing at him because I'm like, I, I, I was frozen. Like, I, I didn't want to get up, but you hear it. Like it was in, but there was nothing out there. He ran out, looked, there was nothing on the roof. It was insane. It, so, it is. Yeah. And, and there's. <clears throat> I'm hoping that um, the, I don't know if it was a private party that bought the house or if somebody's going to do um, any kind of tours or any. I don't know what 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 the plans are uh, for the properties. Uh, I think respectively, both that and uh, and Maplecroft on French Street would be uh, wonderful historical open houses. But, you know, if you buy a house, it's yours. So <laughs> that's open there. Yeah, that they do. But you said now, go ahead. But you said that Maplecroft is re- it's. It's for sale again. It or that was, was before. fairly recent. It was. It was, and then it wasn't, and then it was. I'll have to look and 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 uh, and check Zillow, but I think it's seven hundred six French Street. I can't remember. Um, but uh, it it's it has been on and off the market at least a couple of times in the last five to eight years. Yeah, I think because it was two years ago. It was sold by it was a private family with kids. That's oh. why. Yeah, I think it's sold. Yeah, it's sold. And uh, so do you, what do you think about the Lizzie Borden case? Do you have a theory? Yeah, I, I do think that, you know, the uncle did it. I think you, John a, a Vinegar Morris. Yes, I think he did it. I think. And this is just me saying sure, this. Sure, I don't, sure. I just we're, don't... We're, this is all personal opinion. You, me, Jazz, everybody. So you think the uncle was it was, was the guy. I, I think there was a little bit of, you know, sexual stuff going on with the family. And, and I think the uncle found out and I think they, they killed them, you know, um, or, you know, it could have been about money, but I, I, I think that she didn't, she knew it was going on. So they killed her first and then the other one, 
you know, I, I, you know, that's what I think when I go in there, the first time I walked in there, I was kind of like, you know, I read the book, stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, and as soon as I walked in, I'm like, yeah, there was definitely, that's what I felt. There was sexual abuse and that's why they got killed. There but have that's just been me. quite a few theories that, that, uh, that uh, Andrew Borden had an improper relationship with, with his daughters. And a lot of folks don't know because of the, of the rhyme and they refer to uh, Abby Borden as their mother, that it was technically their stepmother. Mm -hmm. And, um, and John Vinicum Morse, the uncle we're speaking of, was the brother of their birth mother, right? And 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 that was um, and that was the kind of thing. What about you, Jazz? What do you think, Lizzie Borden? I uh, I also think it was the uncle because wasn't he a butcher? The uncle was not a butcher. Mm -hmm. No, who was the butcher? The butcher was their illegitimate half brother. Oh, that one, William I Borden Hathaway. One. Me personally, and I'm going to come right out and say it. I think Lizzie was a patsy. I think they knew she, she would never get convicted and they kind of framed her. And I think Lizzie herself was not necessarily the type of person who was really hip to these kinds of tricks. I think she herself was was a sweet and simple girl and was very naive. And uh, I think that because um, we have Emma, who was the executrix, she was the person who actually got into the coffers once it was all said and done. We have John Vinicum Morse, who had a very tight relationship with Emma and was was very involved in the girls lives and he was uh, you know a man about town and and had some influence mm -hmm. but we also have William Borden Hathaway who was the illegitimate son of Andrew Borden butchered by trade so him walking around yeah. bloody was normal mm -hmm. and he and his mother I think had an axe to grind I think there was a conspiracy that Lizzie knew nothing about and they kind of sort of framed her and because of her I don't know, you know, I, I'm certainly no expert on such things, but I, I think that some of the descriptions and if you read the transcripts and what we know now versus what we knew then, I think Lizzie may have been <clears throat> a little different than most people as far as uh, where she sat on the spectrum, where she, you know, I, I, I certainly am not suggesting that there was anything so tremendously wrong with her, but I think she was very childlike, naive and and may not have been somebody that would could have would have or could have masterminded. Also, she was like five two. You know yeah. how hard it is to cave in a man's skull. You want me to go check? Yeah, I <laughs> Jazz, I got a list. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I mean? I think I think that that the physicality of the crime is is incongruous with her stature, also. Right, yeah. Well, somebody had to do it that really hated them because they really, it wasn't like one, two, it was a bunch, mm -hmm. you know. Well, to use the the more, you know, genteel and technical term, word on the street was um, Andrew Borden was quite the son of a bitch. So I think there was probably, a, there's another list of people who might have had an axe to grind, you know. Yeah. But uh, one of the things that, and folks can find your, uh, I'm just going to put a quick plug in for your social media. They can go on Instagram and Facebook and look up Penn, P-E-N-N, -N, Paranormal. It'll be a uh, uh, ghost logo. And and they can find out a little bit more about what you're doing and what you're up to and see some of your, your videos and all of your cool stuff. But um, there's, like I said, there's lots to see and lots to do. Let's talk about uh, your beautiful artwork. And I saw on your Facebook page the amazing Lizzie doll you did. Talk yes. about your, what, what, now, what, what are they, tell me about these beautiful things you make. So I went to art school and it, it's just weird because my mom always wanted me to do art and there's no money in art usually, obviously. Oh, I know. And yeah. <laughs> so, we all know. Uh, yeah. So I went into the medical field because I just love helping people. So I just, I will. Yeah. So, you know, so I would do crafts my whole life. I can, you give me some, I can, re, I can make it. That's, that's all what, you know, that's, that's what it is. So people start handing me dolls ever since I had the haunted stuff. People start saying, Hey, listen, there's these dolls, take them. I'm like, okay. So I, I had like a whole corner of them. Like, what do I do with these? And then one day I walked into um, a thrift store because I used to work at Penhurst and I used to go buy some baby toys for the children there. Sure. And I saw a doll that had like a um, Annabelle dress. Like a, it was, it was a um, raggedy oh, Ann kind No, it wasn't raggedy Ann. It was a, um, oh, what's that little girl who used to sing back in the day in the sixties? Um, Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple. 
Yeah. yeah. And it had the, the dress. And I'm like, oh my God, she looks like, is it Annabelle? Jo I'm going to make her an Annabelle. And that's what I did. And that's how it started. So then I got another doll and, this is, and she's actually in a case because I, um, there was something attached to this thing. It was pissed that I made into Lizzie Borden. It was a doll that had a bun. I'm like, oh my God, I can make this into Lizzie Borden. I did. And then that's when my house started acting up a little bit. So she had to go in a case and I apologize. That I made her into Lizzie Borden, but it is what it is. So that's how I started it. And but now I buy dolls that are newer or people that don't want them. And I literally take their hair out and whatever they want, I make. So it could be a horror doll. It could just be a creepy little clown. It doesn't have to be anything. And when we went to Lizzie Borden, of course, I had to make another Lizzie Borden doll and take her there to take pictures. But she's mine. I'm not selling her because, you know, it's more sentimental. I just took her there to take pictures, you know. And your work is exquisite. It really, truly is. Your 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 passion for it absolutely shows. Speaking of Penhurst, we're all going to be together, uh, yes. coming on on May eighteenth and nineteenth, and I think they have some uh, events uh, the that, that kick it off. Folks can look up the Penhurst Paracon, and uh, that's going to be in Spring City, P uh, Pennsylvania, May eighteenth and nineteenth. So I know we're going to see you there, but tell me a little bit more about where you're going to be and what you're going to be doing. At Penhurst or, or other ones? Oh, all of it. Tell me all the okay. day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So before that, we go to White Hill Mansion, and that is um, ran by a ghost hunter store. They He does all the proceeds go to the the preserving of the mansion. So Katrina is going to be there. Brian Cannon is going to be there. Um, Heather Talley and Aaron uh, Sanders. I will be there. We're all going to be inside the house. Um, I will have a whole uh, a huge room full of, confirmed haunted you know items that i've had from cases so that's that's new this year is the is the haunted room um but all the proceeds go to you know white hill mansion um and then we go to penhurst and then i do do a, i'm doing another event at the holiday house in south carolina i've never been there yet it is a old a um funeral home so uh, oh, wow. uh, one of my yeah, one of my friends bought it. She's trying to redo it. So we're going down there to help her raise money to restore this historical house. Um, that's in June. Uh, what else are we doing? Um, of course, we go to Gettysburg for the Warren's Paracon. That is in September. That's one of my favorite places to go again because it's just the historical stuff, the people. It's you know, you know, all those people. It's I just love it. It's my favorite one. Um, and this year we're supposed to be going to Costa Rica oh, again. Wow. The, That's awesome. Yeah. So we're just waiting for a couple more permits to come through. So it's not hundred percent guaranteed. Um, last year we were supposed to go, but the permits didn't come through. Um, cause it's a big thing. It's a big paracon and I'm actually the ambassador to the United States. So, I mean, that's to me, the big honor right there. That's um, amazing. And just meet, yeah. And just meet everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can't up. speak Spanish. Yeah, I, oh, I'm terrible. So they say, I, I just keep going. Okay. And I have an interpreter, <laughs> but I feel bad for the interpreter. Cause I have no idea. Right. Um, but there's such awesome people. And it's just a whole different feeling down there. You know, they're just really good. Um, so, and then well, you are a busy lady. Oh, I have like a whole list. I, these are like the ones that I can think off the top of my head. Like I actually printed them out just to put them on Facebook. Cause sometimes I forget you know, but I love it. I like to keep busy and I like to talk about this stuff. You know, I really and do. I can't wait to have you on again already because this has been, a, been an absolute blast. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you in person. I can't describe to you folks how delightfully dynamic Mary Jo is when you when you get to meet her. And I love what you're doing. Your art is amazing. And Thank remember, you. you can you can catch out uh, all these stuff for sure. You can go to the uh, the White Hill Mansion is in Fieldsboro, New Jersey. Yes. And that's going to mm -hmm. be on the May 11th. And uh, Brian Cano has been on the show quite recently. And uh, so, and, and Christina Weidman is amazing. So there's going to be some wonderful folks there in addition to the to the wonderful Mary Jo. And also uh, the Penhurst Paracon, uh, May 18th and 19th. And remember, you can check out Mary Jo's artwork, her videos, and all of her cool stuff if you go on Instagram and Facebook for Pen Paranormal. So, any last words for us? What's your best piece of advice for people, especially, I, I guess we're going to pull the girl card, especially uh -oh. for women who are trying to get into this. What would you, what would you advise? Just stick with your heart. You, if you know it's correct or you know it's right, just go by that. I think women are a little bit more in tune to this, 
the spiritual world. That's just me because we have we have babies growing in our bodies. I think we're more in tune. Maybe you just, do. Just go with, I don't. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I just I just I think that you know most people I know they're just more in tune. Just go with your heart. If you know it's something's bad, if you know it's something's good, you just kind of lead that way, and that's how I do it. And it seems to work very well for me. Women's intuition really is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and I, what do you think, Jazz? I mean, we, we've talked about a lot of stuff and, and I know you've, you've been you've been in. What do you think? What do you think the, the future is for women in the paranormal? Oh, I mean, we got to make a change. We got to do it because it is more geared toward the men. The men get more of the attention than the women do. But the women are, like she said, we're more connected to it than I feel we're more connected than men are so boys and their toys versus women's intuition yeah <laughs> yeah that's true well i, I wish the networks give us a little bit more time you know like just give us a chance you know you know i know a lot of i guess um the travel channel stopped a lot of the shows but it would be nice to have an all girl show you know what i mean yeah. i i really i think we need that we and do. i i, really, I, I to, agree with you yeah i, I agree with you it. I've tried to pitch it, believe me. And like I, I know a whole bunch of really good women that, that yeah. people don't even know. And that they're really good at what they do because they don't put it on social media. And it's just a shame because there's so much we can do, mm -hmm. you know, and do it the right way. You, you know preach it to, to the choir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. I know you're a busy lady and you have some wonderful stuff going on. Looking forward to seeing you. Absolutely. And once again, folks, you can check out Mary Jo's work uh, at Penn Paranormal, both on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, we'll be seeing her at the Pennhurst Paracon Spring City, PA, 518 and 519. And you can go and see her, Brian Cano, Katrina Weidman, and a whole host of cool folks over at the White Hill Mansion in Fieldsboro, New Jersey. I have one question. Oh, there you I go. I think you already oh. said it, but I'm going to ask. Do you okay. think you take Dob donations? Like, hey, I have a attic full of Dobs <laughs> that are like the ones behind you on the shelf. Like, do you just like, here, you want these? People give them to me all the time. They, they're not in this room. They're right. this. They're the ones you see back there. They're, that's my friends gave me. But um, yeah, I have them in a whole different room. Is my craft room, like like mm -hmm. my my you know my art studio, I guess you would say. They're all right. they're separate from my haunted stuff because like okay. not that it matters, but they 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 don't stay in the same room. Yeah. Okay. Because I might have a whole attic full of dolls <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that I feel bad that are just sitting there and not being enjoyed one you way or another. You, you, you know get a craft I mean? room, too, there, Jasmine, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. See, this is this is it's going to keep the art going. It's going to keep things going. And again, like I said, I can't I can't thank you enough. I'm looking forward to seeing you folks again. Check her out at Penn Paranormal, Instagram and Facebook. The fantabulous Mary Jo Chudley. And thank you all for listening. And remember, folks, stay kooky out there. Thank you for listening to Macabre World. You can find us on the web at www.darkerartstudio.com.